uh, Friday, November 5th. It's our first morning here in Kansas, and it's so good to be back. Last year we had such a banner year. Killed two really good bucks in uh, two days. It was amazing. Um, this is a brand new setup. It's only about uh, 50 yards west of our south stand. Brought two just highway looking runs. They look great. But uh, so far no sightings. It's about 38, 39 degrees. Um, it's supposed to start warming up in a couple days. So, uh, But just feels great to be here and uh, just the op opportunity to be in the woods with some big bucks. Hopefully we see some. So we sit tight and see what happens. Saturday, November 6th. Um, nice chilly morning. It was supposed to be a little warmer, but I think the humidity and dampness in the air makes it feel it chilly. Had good action early. Three does came running in from the prairie. Uh, they never committed into the woods, but never saw what chased them. Maybe it was coyotes. And then we had a small buck come up and through, and then maybe about 80 yards from us, there's another real small buck just uh, kind of nosing around. Just a couple scrapes down there, I can see him um, hitting the licking branches. So, But it's still early, we got a couple hours, and uh, you know, hopefully one of the big guys shows up. We've been doing well so far, so, but we've had good action, so it's just a matter of time.
it's uh, Sat Sunday, uh, November 8th. It's our third morning here in Kansas. We've had really good action. Um, this morning we had a doe and a button buck come off the prairie. And then a small buck came from the south. And then another doe came trotting in from the prairie. Thought maybe somebody would be behind her. But no show. Right now there's another small buck bedded about 50 or 60 yards from us. So just haven't seen the big bucks really start cruising yet. We know there's some here. We saw a couple of really nice ones earlier in the hunt. Um, just waiting for the, that switch to flick. Um, apparently we're doing really well with our scent control because uh, we've had a lot of deer downwind of us and with really no negative reactions. So uh, either we're doing well or they've got some kind of allergy and they can't smell anything. So, but um, getting closer to that magic time. Uh, I've done really well here around the so um, I was hoping to get it done sooner, but they're just really not out searching yet. So we're just going to wait them out and hopefully we get our opportunity. So we're going to have to wait them out before they come cruising. Well, that was 20 minutes ago. So uh, that, was, uh, that was really nice. That's exactly how we wanted them to come down. Um, it's like about a three and a half year old. Just not what I came out here to kill. Um, just great being that close to him. He's eight yards away just standing there. It's just, it's just so cool to be in their presence. They're just so sharp. But, uh, we're going to sit and uh, hopefully his... The next size up comes along with a really pretty book.
Tuesday, November 9th, day five for us. We got in the stand, we've been in the stand for about an hour and 15 minutes before daylight. I had deal around us all morning in the dark, it was crazy. We were here five minutes later, we were been busted here. Had a shoot around in the field right at first light. I don't even think we had camera light yet. He was working a scrape maybe 20 yards from us. And then a, uh, a smaller buck, probably a 120 class, came out across and he was heading this way and uh, just kind of looking around and just let him be. So it's been a great spot. Obviously, we just got a week. Uh, hopefully, uh, another that looks like they're cruising, so I just needed somebody to get a little bit tighter to us and uh, give me an opportunity. But perfect morning, feels good, so we'll see what happens.
but it's Wednesday, November 10th, which is the sixth day of our hunt, and uh, it's been a great hunt so far. We have seen bucks on every one of our posts, um, haven't had a shooter close enough yet. I think you know, part of the reason is we've been in the north end of our property a bunch, and we've seen a lot of deer, a lot of bucks, a lot of buck sign, and we've kind of been chasing that area because there's been more activity up there, but it's really random. I mean, so. We're, we're seeing shooter bucks, but they're not in our zip code. So that doesn't do us any good. Um, so reverting back to Old Faithful for me, this is the south stand. We just know that the deer use these runs, you've seen it before, it's just, uh, they're just gonna hit them. Of course, you know, we went to that stand this morning. I get a trail cam this picture this morning at uh, quarter to eight, quarter to nine, whichever it was. Shooter buck walks by probably six, eight yards from the stand. <laughs> you know, can't make it up, but um, we're, uh, we, we thought we were going to get rained out this afternoon, so we're kind of lucky to be in the stand. It's supposed to be thunderstorms, but kind of moving out. So hopefully we, we squeeze this in. It's a little breezy. It's usual in Kansas, but, um, but the rain should hold off till after six, so we should be golden. So uh, we're going to sit tight here. We're probably going to ride this stand out most of the rest of the hunt. We have uh, this afternoon's hunt and two more days to hunt, and then we have to head home. So. Hoping to make something happen in that time and uh, take some venison home and, uh, you know, create some new memories. So let's strap in and see what happens. Just weathered the storm on a on a downpour, thunder and lightning. Like what are we doing out here? Here comes two does running from the north. And Omega Buck is chasing. I think I saw the, the twos and the twos look like twelve inches. The the G the G3s look like ten. I mean, not gonna not out of school here, but I'm just thinking like a one sixty class. She must be hot. They, him and another buck bust them way out into the prairie. Then two more smaller bucks came down. And I uh, just wanted to think here, we're going to get out of here because it's pouring. Jimmy, fortunately, had a raincoat for himself and one for the camera, so the camera got protected. We really weren't able to get footage because it was pouring and it came on us so quick. But just amazing being in the woods with a buck like that, man. Just giant. 160 class, I guess. I don't know. Just bomb him. Hope he comes back. Man, it is on. It's uh, Thursday, November 11th. Got cold, and uh, the big boys are running. 
had this. I had spotted him about 80 yards north of us. He's with a doe, and uh, they, they came walking right down the run to us. They're just walking along calmly. She's about 25, 30 yards from us. And then they explode. They switch sides of the tree. I couldn't even get close to stopping them. And they're down, dead down under us for 20 minutes standing. Now they're easing back to me. And the doe is at like, I don't know, under 20 yards. I just needed to keep walking. They blow up again. They hit sound. So hopefully they spin back up here and come up the run again. But man, this is crazy. The rut is on. Well, it's 11 11, day 7 of our hunt here in Kansas. Um, the 11th has always been pretty good to me. I've, I've uh, been really productive on the 11th, had some, some uh, great opportunities and uh, killed some beauties. Um, it's a typical Kansas day. It's about 54 degrees right now and 15 mile an hour steady wind, so we're kind of used to that being out here. So. I'm not going to see any long pokes today. We want something in tight, maybe uh, under 15 yards. Had a great morning, uh, early action, and then it kind of died out. Had a real great buck following the doe down the trail, just like we want them to. And then when the doe got about 25 yards, he grunted, blasted after her, and just started chasing. They stopped 75 yards from us. Stood there, dead downwind for 20 minutes, never went to us, which is great. Um, then she started easing her way back up to me. She was at 15 yards, um, and if she just kept coming, she would have pulled him into a window for me. And uh, another small buck was south of him, and he just got got agitated and started chasing again, and then it was over. So um, they they when we left, they were south. Uh, we're hoping they want to come back up north and come pay us another visit. So that's what we're hoping for. But um, it's on right now, so. We're just hoping for a cruising buck, looking for a mature deer, and uh, first come, first serve. So, I'm gonna sit tight, hang on. I didn't get it on film, but I've been feeling really good shooting. I don't think Jimmy got the shot on film. I just shot between the crotch of a tree. I'm gonna guess it's, oh, it's barking on 30 yards. He just stood there. I, I just said to myself, if I could draw back and hold and feel really comfortable with the release. Man, I just put one right behind his shoulder. I saw the blood pumping out. I think I got it. That is a giant buck. I cannot believe it. I'm going to kind of 
give them a little bit of time. It's 3.34. Amazing, amazing. That's, we saw that deer three posts in a row, and I just got a really good look at him, and, and I hope we recover that deer because he's gonna be probably my second biggest buck ever. I can't believe I took that shot. I, I just don't take those shots, but he stood so totally calm, standing dead broadside. I had a, like a V of a tree to shoot through, and I uh, just felt so comfortable. I let it, let it go, and it just hit him perfect. So I'm um, going to sit down a minute, and uh, we're going to give him a little bit of time because I just don't want to rush this. I'm going to head over to the point of the hit and uh, see if I can pick up some blood. It's been about uh, 45 minutes since I shot, so it's either he's dead or he's not. So um, still start, start taking a look to see what he's doing. Well, it's Friday, November 12th. Um, I shot this deer last night on the 11th at about 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, he was tending the doe for the past day and a half, and we had three encounters with him. We kept seeing him. Actually had him in the morning run by the stand at like four yards uh, so quickly that I couldn't even get my, my fingers on the string, and Jimmy couldn't even get him in the viewfinder. Um, then he, he circled back up 20 minutes later, had the doe at 15 yards, just going to walk by me and run, walk him through a window at 15. And, of course, he grunted, started chasing again, and they ran by headed down south, so we got back in the stand early, and um, uh, it was probably about uh, 3 o'clock, 3.05, I saw the doe, and then he popped out, and they worked in close um, up the fence line, but he stayed out of the distance, um, ended up being out at about 30 yards, which I normally would never shoot, um, but I've been just really shooting well and really confident in my shooting, so, uh, actually, he Jimmy didn't even have the camera rolling during the shot because he didn't even expect me to shoot because I just never shoot that far. But um, he stopped in an opening and he was just so super relaxed and calm. He was grooming himself. And I had an opening and um, I wasn't even planning on shooting. I was like, let me draw the bow back, see how I feel. He draw, drew and held. I probably held for about five or six seconds. It just felt so good. I let the string slip from my fingers and man, it just hit home perfectly. Um, my first reaction was got him, and um, uh, I mean, even when I went up to Jimmy, to he turned the camera on, and I just, you know, he knew from my reaction that it, uh, you know I felt like it was a good shot. So we gave him 45 minutes, found the arrow, and um, was a little concerned because the penetration was only about 10 inches or so. Uh, I initially thought it was a hard shot. Obviously, it wasn't because um, we got on the blood, and it was super sparse. So. We decided, uh, we went right to dark. Jimmy did a little search while I was staying on the blood, and we tried to get in contact with a guy with a tracking dog. Um, we got a few people uh, in touch with a few people. One, finally, we got a guy who was supposed to come around midnight. Of course, he texted me at about 11.30, said he couldn't make it. So we just decided to try to sleep and um, get at him in the morning. So we split up. Jimmy went to the north, I went to the south. We scoured the area. Uh, to kind of intersect and meet each other. Um, and I hit this next block of woods, and uh, which is literally 125 yards from where we stopped blood trailing. And Jimmy was actually probably 75 yards from this buck last night when he stopped. Um, super unfortunate because we had to let him go overnight and uh, the coyotes found him ahead of us. And um, you know, it's, just, it's just what happens when you hunt out west. It's a chance that you take, but it was just it was the smart thing to do was to back out last night, so that's what we did. Um, I'm super proud of the shot. Uh, just made a really, really great shot at 30 yards. We went out with a recurve bow. It's uh, um, something I don't expect to do, but uh, it happened. And, um, but uh, just uh, it was just a great experience. Uh, you know, created a new memory for Jimmy and I that you know we'll never forget. And um, you know, this is just what what we come here for. Just just an absolute giant buck. Um, little row point back here off his G3, uh, split one, and you know, just super heavy and just a big body deer. So, um, you know, I really appreciate being out here and being able to chase, you know, these big white tails like this. But 
um, unfortunate consequence of hunting out west with that's just loaded with coyotes. Uh, so uh, we're just going to salvage what meat we can out of them, and um, at least the mystery is solved, and we uh, we know the hit was good. So um, I just wanted to share the story with you.